Welcome everybody to today's sit down. In studio, I have an absolute, absolute alpha male joining us for this sit down. His name is Jaco De Bruin, weightlifter and model, founder at Fitness Runway Model SA, Aesthetics Era, and ambassador at EHB Labs, former Mr. World South Africa, voted male role model of the year for 2016, voted top 100 most influential South Africans in 2017 with approximately 5 million followers on social media, devoted husband, a loving father of two boys and one of the biggest gentlemen that I've ever met in my life. Welcome, sir, to our show. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Yeah, what a great intro. <laughs> um, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, when you listen to all of that, you know, it takes you back in memory lane of how far you've you come and what you have achieved. So, yeah, thank you. It's a huge pleasure. So we are so honored <coughs> to have you here. Everybody was excited. We had an off-camera discussion. The girls are lining up <laughs> here to take photos with you like nobody can believe that you're in our studio. So it's a Thank it's a you. great honor to have Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you. I love starting with this question. Everybody that we've interviewed, I mean, you're a, you're a fine young man. You're a, you're a role model for so many, for millions. You know, I'm a huge fan. Everyone in the studio is a huge fan. This is who you are today. But if we could take you back and do, boom, a little bit of magic and the 17-year-old version of you comes in, sits down on this couch, and then we both look at him like, who are you at 17? What's important to you? What priorities are number one, two, three? Like, what's going on in your mind at 17? Um, I think from a very young age, I was never scared of taking risks and um, you know if I look back I'm 38 now when I look back at every single thing that went through my mind as a thought that I wanted to do I did okay everything that I wanted to do I achieved I'm not necessarily one at what I wanted to do but I did it and I think that was that was engraved into me from a very very young age um, I've just always wanted to be somebody that made an influence in people's lives, uh, not necessarily knowing where I would be doing that. Um, because fitness modeling and my career in the industry was probably the last thing that I ever thought I'll do. But I've, I'm so blessed that I've been able to be so successful locally and internationally in what I do, not necessarily having the best physique, but being involved in my passion about giving back we are so being blessed with um, but yeah I think that's that's everything in a nutshell to be honest but yeah just for me like like I said I when I was young I always looked at magazine covers saying that I want to be on a magazine cover um, you know well-built people was something that always intrigued me and this, so you know, that pulled you all the time from me. a young yeah, age I remember when my mom went in to CNA or whichever shop you know I always ran to the magazines and I was like looking at the covers and oh, I want to look like this one day. Um, yeah, and I've done it. I've done probably nine front covers locally and internationally awesome. on fitness magazines all around the world. And it's, um, it's, it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. Were you a sporty type? Were you an academic type? I like think I was, my dad was a runner and my dad did okay. the Comrades Marathon. 14 times. 14 times? Yeah, and I wow. think his best time was just over six hours. We placed like 71st or 72nd. Jeez, that's amazing. Which was incredible. And my dad was actually very strict on me and he didn't want me to do any other sport but running. Okay, interesting. So, uh, and I did really well in it. Um, not necessarily saying that I loved running, but, um, you know, that's what my dad wanted me to do and that's what I did. So, um, my entire high school career, you know, I was un. un in the 1500 long distance running and when it comes to 800 and 400 I was always in the top three but I think and I always use this as an example um, where my determination comes from is, is definitely that breathing of a person behind you yes uh, you know when you're running and I always remember it and I, I use that in all my businesses that I've started it and been successful at is 
know that's always going to be somebody behind you that's going to chase you. And I always hear that person's breath, and that's what determined me to always just push harder and run faster. Amazing. And I still use that till today. So, um, yeah, I, I just did running, to be honest. That's the only sport I've done. So what I pick up is a great <clears throat> foundation from, from your dad in terms yeah. of work ethic yes. and, and in terms of drive. He drove you, yeah, and he drove sure. you like like a champion because you're a champion. Yeah. He drove you. He didn't promise you X, Y, Z. He said yeah. to you, you can be better. There's someone that's pushing to take yeah, your first spot. And I think that's your love language from what yeah, I pick up. For sure, yeah. And, and that um, gave you the drive. Yeah, and I, you know, my biggest disappointment was I did essays. And it was the last year of, of school. I was in matric. And I'd always won 1,500 meters. So I was chosen for this African team. And I went to essays. And there was only six runners. And I'll never forget. The only six runners, and I came six. You that came year. six. And my last run ever. And um, that was, I never ran again. <laughs> and t- tell me about um, your time. Did you, did you do a considerably good time in terms of what you, what you were used to running? Yeah, I, I can't even remember my best time, to be honest. Um, but w- I loved winning. That's all I remember. Um, and my dad pushing me every single day was, you know, was what made me a champion in, in running back, back when I was in school. Um, best time, I think, for 1,500 was just over four, four minutes, four and, a, four and a half minutes. Um, but it always changed, you know. Yeah, so depending on conditions depending, yeah, and, and, and how hard I trained. And, and how hard I trained, yeah. <laughs> but um, coming back to the running, also, I was, I was super skinny my entire life. And that's also something that, that like, bothered me big time. You, you know, I, I think, wanted to address that. Like, how do you run that quickly with... <laughs> With guns like yeah, those, I was, I, mean. I, was, yeah, I was skinny. I'm still a, ski, a skinny kid inside, so you know. But it's genetically, that's that's who I am, and I think it played a lot of advantages of being a bodybuilder or in the industry because of my genetics. Like getting, it's easier for me to get lean, and um, you know, I've also been doing it for 12 years now. So constantly, always be in shape wasn't hard for me because of my genetics, but it was hard for me to actually put in the work and gaining the muscle. We've changed the topic completely now, but just wanted to tell you, like, for, it took me 12 years to, to put on. So I think there, let's jump into it. Like, how do you, you know, from, from that young, young boy at 17 winning 1500 long, that's mid to long distance mm, running, yeah. you, you know, how do you become a fitness model yeah. in Europe, USA, Australia? Like, you've been on, yeah. on every stage yes. at every event. How does that happen? Um, so I wanted the gap year after, after, um, after matric. matric. So I went overseas. Um, I went to the UK and I worked there as a backpacker. I literally, I worked in a hotel, work a few months, then go to Europe, come back, work in a hotel as a barman or waiter. Save up some money, travel, travel and again. enjoy. So the traveling thing was also something that I wanted to do from a very young age. Um, and that's where I met my wife. 20 years ago. Okay. It's crazy. Is she South African? She's South African, yeah. So also I, on the same, similar journey. Yeah, she did the same thing. She, awesome. she started working at the hotel and um, that's how I met her. And yeah, still married 20 years later, two beautiful kids. Um, but I came back from, I was almost there for just under four years in the UK. Um, I loved it there, but I had to come back because my visa expired and all of those things. Um, then I started doing modeling. I think I was also at the stage like I didn't really know what I wanted to do in my life, you know. Um, thinking going to the to the UK would solve that, which I obviously very happy I did because I met my wife and I've got the most beautiful kids. But I came back and I started studying LLB. I want to just touch on something. Yeah. You, you know, you you're an expert in your field. You're a master at what you do. Yeah. And what you just said, I think that the audience that that, that's watching this, you, you maybe need to rewind a minute and a half, two minutes, because even you, the, I mean, the absolute alpha male that you are, you were not certain what, what mm. to do at the age of 22. So that's yeah. normal. Being young yeah. is, 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 is yeah, uncertain. And I was, I, was, I was also scared because 22 is actually still young. It's still a baby. Your brand also, hasn't developed but yet. Also, a lot of my friends then finished their studies. So I was in a place in my life where I was like, I need to do something now. Uncertainty. Yeah. Um, so I did the modeling and I started studying through UNISA, LLB. 
um, hated every moment of it. <laughs> and um, I did three years and then I gave up. Oh, so, um, which, which today, like, I wish I finished it as well. You know, it's just little things when you look back and you wish you just done the full thing. Um, but I also knew that I was at a stage of my life where I was already overseas for four years and I need to make money, I need to survive and start planning my were life. You, were you married already when you guys um, came back? I wasn't you got married, married, no. So we, I got married 2007. Okay, so you worked I, a I few I came back years. 2004, so three years and then I got married. Um, but anyway, so started modeling, did extremely well in the modeling in South Africa. Went one model of the year, went to America one model of the year in Las Vegas. Um, so the modeling took off. I started training because I wanted to look good the whole time. Um, I did Mr. Pretoria in 2008. I won Mr. Pretoria. And this was like for me, like, it's, it's, this is something small, but it was like, I'm doing well, you know? Yes. It's this those is probably wins. the field that I need to go into. Then, um, Mr. South Africa contacted me because I've won the provincials and, the, and I said no because I won Mr. Pretoria they want me to do Mr. South Africa back then Mr. South Africa was still huge so it's not I don't even know if they still exist but anyway um, it was it was a great journey for me and I I didn't want to do Mr. South Africa because I did a bit of research and Michael Mole and all those people back in the day they're all above 30, 30 between 32 and 35 and I was only 25 that time and um, I went to my dad and I said to him, you know what, like these guys are mature. Yeah. They, um, they already got successful businesses. They, you know, they well-established men. I'm 25, like I'm just doing modeling. And my dad said, you know what, if you want to do it, do it. Age is just a number. Agree. And, Great um, advice. I went for it. So I did extremely well. I've, I've fully involved in community, helping where I can and trying to make a difference and inspire people. And I loved every minute about it. Um, I did not win that year, which was a huge disappointment for me because I put my heart and soul into something so big. But looking back now, it was such a blessing in disguise because the lessons that I've learned from not winning everything in my life came that night at Mrs. Africa. And um, obviously, everybody wants to win and everybody feels some sort of disappointment because... You've, you've worked so hard to achieve something that you were so passionate about for such a long period of your life, you know, like consistently working two years to, you know, win that title. But um, so many doors opened for me after Mr. South Africa, Mr. South Africa because if I, wa if I, if I won Mr. South Africa, I, was, I would have been under contract and I wouldn't be able to do anything else in that year we go. But it put me on such a great platform and I used that opportunity to build my own identity, my own brand as Yaku the Brain. And all of the things just came fl flooding in all TV programs, um, soapies, um, um, shows like this where the people just wanted to know who I am and what of I was course. doing. You're and a I public was, figure. Yeah, I became a public figure overnight yes. and I just used all of that to build myself as a brand which I'm very glad I've done from a very early age because people look at me and they think bodybuilding and fitness now, but not, not a lot of people know that there was a huge chapter of my life before fitness. Yes. Um, although it's something from, you know, a sanity, like you mentioned, something that I really wanted to do yes. from a very young age without me realizing that that was my passion. Yes. Um, I was just always inspired by these people on magazines and you know living that lifestyle that was pulling you which that is a lot me, yeah. stronger than you pushing yourself towards yeah, something for sure um and to come back to you like i had a call just after mr south africa and until today and I, I've, I've told this story before many times that the lady phoned me and i still don't know who she is okay <laughs> and she phoned me and she said that she could see the disappointment in my face and um, she just want to say that bigger things is going to happen Wow. Don't be, don't be discouraged. You know everything happens for a reason. Just do exactly what you've done now, and be passionate about what your dreams are, and just follow it. And um, yeah, and I did that. So obviously, just a random call. A random call, like I, I still don't know. I, I don't know if it was somebody that was watching the event. Most probably. Um, 
and she, you know i think she she felt sorry to me and she just wanted to give me a message and that message stuck. like i still stuck with me till today beautiful um, awesome. thank you ma'am for phoning yeah, for phoning our friend thank you very much um yeah and you know just long story short i started training and training was really important for me because i, I was always in front of the camera modeling tv shows um seven alarm what i did for, for a short period of time and um you know i just always wanted to do good then my body obviously started training because i, I changing because i took my training very serious and um start losing modeling work because i got too big and i always wanted to scroll well toned boyish kind of look yes and um I was like, you okay. showed up one morning and said, yeah, right. I'm a man now. <laughs> and yeah, the, so the camera I, guy was like, geez, okay, I need a different <laughs> lens for this human being. <laughs> um, then there was Media24, which you know, it's a, it's a big company. Yes, sir. Um, they started a modeling campaign called The Man Watch. Okay. And they wanted the, the most, um, the best looking physique in South Africa. And um, I thought, okay, that was, that was in the year after um, Mr. SA. And I said, okay, you know, this is a media company that you kind of put a lot of budget into it. Yes. And I'm going to do this. So I entered Manwatch and I won. And that's put me on another platform. I was on all the covers, Rapport, all the newspapers, Ice and Earth, uh, Heat Magazine, where I'm the new look. I remember Africa. Heat Magazine. Yeah, yes, so yes. A, a Heat Magazine published me quite a bit and that's really elevated me to another level um, which was great for me which I also used to build my platform um, and just putting myself out there and um, also decided that yeah okay you know what I'm gonna just go from modeling to fitness modeling this is what I want to do I'm gonna start competing I don't really know what this competing thing is all about but um, it obviously gave me a platform to prove myself and that's when I started doing 2011 was my first local competition. As a fitness model. As a fitness model. Awesome. And the, you know, 2010, sorry. So 2010, I won Mr. Physique, 2011 and 2012. Three years in a row. Three years in a row. You know, if you can defend your title, you're a true champion. If you defend it twice, you're a legend. Yeah. Which you are. Yeah, yeah. So that, that for me was amazing. But the thing that I hated the most was... And this is where the business mind of Yaku the Brain kicked in, was that you win a show and you walk away with a tub of protein, or you walk away with a haircut, a free haircut, or you walk away with a personal training session with a personal trainer. And I think to myself, like, I've, you've won the show, and there's like, you, there isn't, like, the fitness industry at that time for me was just like, how can we change this? Because yeah. I know the amount of effort, and I'm talking um, for everybody, because at that time, like, how can we elevate the fitness industry? How can we build the hype and the excitement to be able to step on a stage and walk away and feel like, you know what, that was worth it? You, you, you look like Superman. Yeah. I mean, you, you look like Superman yeah. and you walk away with a free haircut. Yeah. And the amount of, never mind money that it takes to, to, to be able to eat properly mm. and, and time, train properly. The, 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 the discipline is, I, I don't know of any other sport that requires so much finesse, mm. calorie counts. Like yeah. you, you can't eat what you want. No. You can't. No, it's hard work. It's, and you know, for me, being at that age and realizing that I wanted to make a difference because that's who I am and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to change, change what is happening. And I, I wasn't aware if, if it's just in South Africa or is it something that happens all over the Globally, world. Globally, yeah. So the only way for me to find out was to go compete overseas. Yes. I know I've won three shows in, 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 in a row in South Africa, three years in a row, and I felt like I I've got something and I want to take it to the next level. To the next level, yes. So I googled the biggest fitness show in the world, and that was WBFF. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. And it's called, it was World Beauty, Fitness and Fashion. So before I competed there, I and Paul Dillett, which is a very well-known 
bodybuilder. He competed back in the day with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And a South African? No, a Canadian. Canadian. Okay, and so you got owns, into contact. He owns WBF of South okay. Africa. Okay, okay. Um, I then emailed him from a Google email and said to him that I want to bring the Federation to South Africa. Yes. Um, is that possible? And he said, okay, let's put up a Skype meeting. And um, I put up a Skype meeting with him and he, he laughed at me and he said to me, um, so many South Africans have reached out to me, but it's never been successful. I said, okay, what does it take to make it successful? He just said, you've got to build the brand. And I was 27 at that stage, I had no money. And I said to him, give me a chance, I'm going to do this. And I also want to compete in Las Vegas. So I went to compete that year in Las Vegas. And also in the meantime, while I was prepping to do my first international show, I w created my own website. And I wish I still had it because you would laugh at you if you, if you looked at it now, <laughs> um, that I'm bringing WBF to South Africa. And I've put in my own banking details there. Um, Yakuri Brain with my bank account number, and this is the entry number. And um, the entry started flowing in. It went viral. WBFF has come to South Africa. Um, all the athletes in South Africa knew about this federation, and now it's the biggest thing ever that this federation is coming to South Africa. But nobody knows who's bringing it to South Africa. Anyway, so um, I was just like, money was started coming into my account. I was like, what the hell is happening? It went viral. Everybody was talking about it. Everyone was posting my banner that I created. And it was just went crazy. Awesome. That, so then I went to Vegas to go compete for my pro card and I won WBFF Amateur Show. as won my pro status in 2013 and came back to do the show, which was the first WBFF show in South Africa. Um, long story short, I had great people approaching me, good friends of mine, um, Chris McWilliams and Andrew Carruthers that got involved. Andrew used to own Muscle Evolution okay, um, and the fitness magazine. And they all came in, um, involved with WBF South Africa. And we hosted the biggest WBF amateur show in the world. In South Africa in South for Africa. the first time. We had over three and a half thousand people in the audience. Wow. And wow. 260 athletes on stage. Beauty. I remember standing in front of that stage and just, it was at Big Top Arena. Ach, not Big Top Arena, um, Carnival City. Yeah, it's a Big Top Arena. Yeah. Um, and I was just like looking at the stage and looking behind me and it's just thousands of thousands of people. That's amazing. And I was crying like a baby. I was like, I couldn't believe I did this. I did, I did this, yeah. Um, but long story short, I hosted WBF for four years. And then somebody asked me the question, Yaku, are you making money from this? And I was like, not I'm yet. not making money. And it's not my show. Yeah. It's somebody else's show. Yeah. And for, for three years in a row, WBF Africa won the biggest amateur show in the world. And um, my love and passion wasn't the money. My love and passion was looking at the athletes and seeing how happy they are. And now I've got athletes on my stage winning pro cards. The dream that I always wanted, I gave to them and they went all overseas to compete overseas. That's, what we're, that's where my passion lies. You're a true servant, sir. And, um, Serving leader. But that question bothered me a lot. Like, yes. do you make money? Because we all want to make money. We of all we, we all do what we love to make money. And... Um, I just felt at that stage that, you know, it's now time for me to step away and start my own show. And that's when I started Fitness Runway Model South Africa, which is six years old now. And well, this would be the sixth year. And now it's also the biggest fitness show in Beautiful. Africa. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's the bigger part of the story. And uh, I won my pro card in 2013 and then competed seven years for WBFA. Um, and in that seven years, always been in the top five in the world. That's Never won world, but uh, always been in the top five. Uh, that's very amazing. hard to yeah. do. I mean, that's consistency on another yeah. level. Thank that's you. amazing. Thank you. If you, were, if you were to go back with the business brain that you have mm -hmm. today, you know, back at the start of your career, 
what's the one advice you'd give yourself? You know, I've, I've gone, I've jumped through hoops, and in my opinion, everything happened for a reason. Mm. Everything taught you, you know, how to level up constantly. Yeah. And your love for, for the passion for the sport and for the athletes and the opportunity and the doors that were opened is the reason why you're so successful. Mm. But in terms of business, monetizing, if you could take back one piece of advice and give it to Jaco de Bruyne, you know, just in the beginning of the, of the, of the point where you said, I'm going to be a fitness mod mm -hmm. model, what will that be? I think my, the best advice that I would give is not to be scared of taking risks and don't necessarily worry about having money to create a brand or something to start It doesn't with. take money to create a brand, yeah, it, I takes think it takes effort. It takes effort, it takes time, dedication, consistency and believing in what you do. I yes. think that's, that's the very, very most important thing is you've got to be passionate about what you do, otherwise why are you doing it? You need you know? to believe in the vision. You need to believe in the vision. And the thing is, the best advice is like, yes, there was a lot of failures and there was a lot of, you know, a lot of people come into your life for the wrong reasons, uh, which I also, you've just mentioned, like, you know, that's part of the game that you, you have to, these people have to come in your life for you to learn that lesson and to elevate. Absolutely. Um, they just course correct. They touch you, yeah. you're, you're just two centimeters um, and you go again. Okay. Don't trust everybody, but know that, you know, everybody is there for a reason to learn a lesson. Um, but just believe, you know, and be passionate about what you do, or what you want to do. I think that's my, that's my biggest thing. And, um, you know, all the business that I've got now is all affiliated within the fitness industry or, you know, like there will be an element from what I love, where my clothing brands, um, the, my fitness show, my online coaching, my personal training, you know, everything is in one bubble, but I've elevated into different fields where obviously the only thing that does not fit within the circle is the is the franchise that I bought, Ultimate Pet Care, where we okay. groom doggies. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I wasn't expecting well, yeah. that, to, to be honest. So that's the only one that doesn't fit, but it was an investment, um, me and my friend John. Um, and it's doing really well. So. Congratulations. Congratulations. I think the, the secret sauce is always passion. Mm. It's dedication. It's hard work. It's, I mean, in, uh, you, that's an evergreen strategy. You, you know, yeah. looking after yourself, your body is evergreen in any environment. Mm. Eating properly is evergreen in any yeah. environment. Accepting failures as lessons is mm. evergreen in any environment in any country. Mm. I mean, that's, that's, if Something that everybody has to go through, you know, and it's, it's, I promise you that there was a lot of times that you just wanted to give up and, um, you know, there's a lot of times where you've lost a lot of money. Um, you <laughs> Those know, invested, are life lessons. <laughs> yeah, I invested in the wrong, you know, avenues or fields where you wanted to, but that's, you know, just don't give up and try again. And I think that's, like with my clothing brand, this is my, this is my fourth one now. And this is the successful one. What is it called? It's Belly Naked. So Belly Naked we, clothing brand. So we do swimwear and um, underwear and men's loungewear. So only for men. Where all my other clothing brands were like for men and women. But it didn't make sense in a way where it was me and what my following what wanted. Because obviously I wanted to cater for my following because I've got a huge following. And... Um, when I started the not the fitness apparel side of things, which I feel like everybody is doing, and changed my way getting into the fit of uh, getting into the clothing business, which I'm also very passionate about, and I felt like majority of my my following are all men, and I'm going to cater, I'm going to do underwear, and I'm going to do swimwear and loungewear and pajamas and something that not every fitness athlete of course. is doing. Yeah, and it's doing extremely well. And so. that's your that's your angle that's your life yeah. i want to jump into a different topic quickly I, I we i know we are on the tail side of it and hopefully it's gonna go away forever it will be like a bad dream yeah. i really hope so i want to jump into COVID and perhaps one or two of the lessons that you've learned from from the time you entered COVID, what emotions and what feelings mm. you were having versus the evolution of your of your businesses during COVID, and now when it's time to say goodbye finally? Mm. I think 
everybody was uncertain and everybody wow. was scared. In every and, industry. In any industry. And um, especially if you if you work for yourself and you've got your own businesses, it's it's it was tough. Um, my biggest fear was my sponsorships being a fully endorsed athlete with EHP Labs and right away and you know that's that's also a big income for me and um, you know with being a sponsored athlete I've used all of my avenues to start my own businesses so that whole fear of you know uh, that's just gonna disappear it's gonna go um, was was yeah. pretty scary however I'm very used to change and adapt and um, I think everybody that owns their own businesses has to have that mentality that to. change is inevitable and you, you, you know you gotta always be on your toes. The only Doesn't constant matter. is change. That's yeah. the only constant. And I think I think when I when I look at COVID, it's it's literally just gave everybody a wake up call. You know that you need to plan. Um, it did have an effect on my businesses, but um, it all, I'm also happy that we had to go through that change to just you know value what you've got and just work harder because i think a lot of times you you fall into a comfort zone where you know things are going good and you don't plan for the future but um yeah it's it's been it was scary but uh, we adapt um we made a lot of business changes like um I think everybody went through the same emotions, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. We, we, took, we took a, you know, B2C business, business to customer, um, you know, fully digital. We don't even have one wet signature anymore. If you're buying cash or finance, no wet signatures. I mean, the, the whole company transformed into a digital business yeah. and quickly. It had to evolve in like two months. Otherwise, mm. we were dead fish in the water. Yeah, yeah and it's like all my businesses are all online online except for the doggy grooming uh -huh. where where emotions is also plays a huge role in that business because yes. it's it's what i love about ultimate pick it's 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 a business that is very emotionally attached to the reason why we do what we do because we all got pets and a lot of people even myself having kids like my pets are also my kids absolutely and um the 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 whole setup with Ultimate Becker is we're coming to your house, we wash your dogs at your house, um, and we groom them in a five-star trailer yes. where you can see what's happening. You take that emotional stress off the animals and the anxiety, which a lot of them get when you go drop them at the doggy do Absolutely. Camera. And that's changed. This The, the, the owner, Hannes, has, has a brilliant business concept there and um, you know when the opportunity came to us it's something that I also felt like uh, you know there's something that I value and I would definitely invest in and, that, and believe so. in yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. that's why that's why it will grow and I wish yeah. you all the success you in so the much. world when it comes to that Thank you. now it takes a village to raise a man and I'm sure there's been many people that have touched your life positive and negative to course correct and become the person the successful entrepreneur that you are if you could maybe touch on three people i know it's very difficult but you know three people and what lesson that person has brought into your life to become who you are today what you most value um i think definitely my wife first wife. of all because when you look if you don't know me and you look at my social, you know, it's a very um, come across as obviously a super fit model. Um, there's a lot of sexual attachment to the persona that I prevail or people yes. look at me and see. And, um, you know, it's, it was it was a phase with Mr. Pretoria, Mrs. Mr. South Africa and Mr. World and being winning the shows and becoming Mr. Physique and then winning my pro state. Like I was always in the limelight as Lots this of attention. pretty boy and and attention and um, media. And one thing that kept me grounded was my wife. And it's like people, and I've been in the industry for so long, but people come and go and, you know, they they just lose track of reality. And she kept me grounded. She supported me. She knew what my passion was. 
um, you know, the trust and the and everything was there to help me become the man I am today. Beautiful. Um, Without a, I, I don't think from what I pick up, I don't think you would have been as successful because you had a foundation that was yeah, rock solid. solid yeah. Beautiful. Um, then, obviously, I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for my mom and my dad. Like that The will, voice. That will definitely be the the first step of gratification that comes from them. Like they, they, the morals that I've learned from them, you know, stuck with me and like big things to them, yeah, for sure. I can, I can just feel it. The values and <coughs> principles in your life are rock solid. Yeah. You know what's right and you, you go hard at that, yeah. you know what's wrong, and you spend no time or attention on, yeah. on, on what, what's not within your lane. Yeah, I think, you know, humanity is, 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 a, is a big part of, of who I am as well. Like, my vision, like I've mentioned, is wanting to create opportunities for people, wanting to inspire people, and wanting people to believe in themselves in whatever you think you can achieve. And I've got this quote that I live by. Like, if it runs over and over in your head, there's nothing that can stop you from achieving it. Beautiful. I love it. And, um, yeah, and that just comes from my morals, you know. Like, uh, you know, there was a lot of times that, you know, you feel like you're not doing the right thing. Um, but I just, I just believe that, you know, this is what I do. This is what I love. How people see me, not knowing me, it's also okay. You know, get get the opportunity to, to meet me and talk to me about what I've done and where I am in my life. But I also understand that people can get the wrong impression of the industry and, you know, the picture and the, the message that you want to bring out there. A, a lot of times people will form an opinion based on what they've heard or, or what yeah. they've seen. It's, it's so dangerous to do that. Yeah, and if that's you, okay. Like, you know, I also say, like, let people need to talk. Like... If they not talk, then you, you need to worry. I'll confess, like even you coming here today, we've done tons of research. Yeah. We know who you are. We're huge fans. I was very reserved. I didn't know, you know, the energy you'd bring yeah. into the room. And, and I'm very pleasantly surprised. You're, you. a, you're an absolute gentleman. Thank you're you. Soft-spoken, calm, very calculated. Thank you. I love the energy you brought Thank to Thank you. Me. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, and then I think the last person would definitely be Kieran. Kieran has been my backbone when it comes to keeping and helping me make the right decisions business-wise because I'm quite a softy and it was easy for people to walk over me. Um, you wouldn't think so <laughs> looking at you. I'd be like, I'll be too scared to come close to him, but I'm joking. Um, <laughs> and it, Kieran is my business partner in most of my businesses. He, if there's anyone besides my wife that knows Yaku the Brain to the T, that's Kieran. Did you guys grow up together? So Kieran, I, I met Kieran probably about five, six years ago. I made a status on Facebook where I'm looking for a videographer to travel with me because I was, I was traveling like in the, from 2013 to 2019, just before COVID hit. I was literally traveling to a country every month, wow. if not twice. Wow. Um, every second week I was overseas, I was doing seminars, expos, people invited me all over. I literally, I did, I think every year I visited about 52 cities. That's in amazing. A year and traveled the whole world. And obviously being a social media influencer, you know, I have to create content and I always use the lady Bless her, she's brilliant, but she's unfortunately in the UK and she charged me in pounds. And, uh, <laughs> Damn exchange <laughs> so it was, it was it was so expensive. I uh, oh, love it man. to bed and her work was amazing. But I really struggled hard to get somebody local that was good at videography and editing. and It could match your, your yeah, level. Just of follow me and tell my story. And that Karen was that guy. So he, I responded to his message and he's, I said, no, come to my house. And he knew what, who I was. He actually made a video of the best physiques in 2011. And that video has got over a million wow. views, if not more by now, um, where I was one of his favorite athletes. It's such a small world. Okay, so he <clears throat> was already a fan he was of the sport, fan. a yes. fan of you. 
and you had created content already. And yes. Was like, I'm, I'm your guy. Like, look here. Yeah. Was it, so that was an easy, easy yeah. job. job and then interview. I'm like, Karen, I'm flying to Mexico in two weeks. Are have you, you got a passport? <laughs> have you got a passport? And he traveled with me all over the world, you know, joining my benefits where the people obviously pay for us to go overseas. So, Beautiful. You know, it was, it was, it was fun. Um, and yeah, now, you know, he, he was a very, he was a big head at um, DHL. So very business orientated. Um, he ran DHL Africa, the managing side of things. So he was the perfect match for me to help me understand business better um, and run our businesses because I was always in front of the camera. Yes. Um, and yeah, six years later, he's part of all my businesses and fully involved in the back end of everything. And he's just been absolutely incredible. Like without him, everything that I own wouldn't be possible. It takes, it takes a different type of a personality to execute. You know, those conversations behind closed doors mm. and negotiations are yeah. really tough. And, and yeah, he sounds amazing. Yeah, so that would be my top three. I hope it's Beautiful. Didn't Thank miss you. somebody out there. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm sure you did. But, uh, you know, the, off the top of your head, it's a yeah. very difficult conversation. Yeah. It takes a village to raise a yeah, man. For sure. And if I could ask, like, chilling out on a weekend, if there was no cameras, there's no... Mm. There's no social media around you. If we were to take your phones and It'd say, hard day. Yeah, hard day. <laughs> I know, I know you, you'll probably still train in the morning or in the evening, depending on what yeah. you're doing that, that week or that month or whatever mm. you're preparing for. But what do you like to do just to hang out and chill? How would that look? Um, I think my success also is um, I've got a very balanced lifestyle. Like, um, what does that mean? Um, like, I've, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a businessman, uh, I'm a wine drinker, I love food, like food is, I'm a big foodie, and when I say food, you know, it's, I'm not talking about diet food, I love making food, but like, anything goes on a weekend for me, um, so yeah, I, I think that's balance, that's, that's my balance. So, a high performer wants to achieve phenomenal results in every area of their life. Drink wine. Drink wine, great. <laughs> Even drinking wine, <laughs> as long as it's a good wine. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I want to jump into some mistakes and perhaps some landmines that you've stepped in. Nobody becomes successful at the level that you do unless you've made some big mistakes. Mm. If you don't mind sharing maybe one or two, we call them landmines. You stepped on it, poof, explosion, but you're here to tell the story. You know, we want our viewers to hopefully say, Yaku stepped on that mine. Mm. Perhaps we could just sidestep that mine and, and you know pick up that lesson. Um, I'm a very impulsive thinker, and I always went into everything without research and doing proper um, preparation. Preparation. Um, I'm also very. Uh, I wouldn't say gullible, but I'm also very like. What is the right word? Like so easy to agree. Easy to agree to things that shouldn't be agreed to. And, you know, that's where Karen always is brilliant now. Like, everything just goes to him. Karen will be the um, cynical one and, like... The voice of reason. Yeah. Um, I think that w was probably my biggest downfall in a lot of decisions that I make and over-investing too quickly. Um, financially and time. Um, you know, people always talk about investing money, but time is for me the biggest thing yeah and then the money comes yeah absolutely um, because if you waste time on stuff that does not matter you are going to fall behind very quickly um, and i think that's that's a lesson that i think everybody should know that in a business or wants to start a business is like navigate your time and make sure that the time that you put into something that it's going to be worth it at the end yeah yeah. Um, yeah, I think those two would be... The, it, th time is the most expensive asset we have. And, you know, sometimes saying no is just helping that person along faster than rather saying yes and not committing mm. fully. I've been very guilty of that. Yeah. We, we recently, as a company, we read a book called um, Crucial Conversations. 
and it's a phenomenal book for anybody out there that struggles to say no to to things it just teaches you how to bring it into perspective say no and walk away yeah, and, and yeah I, I i wish i'd learned that as a young man yeah. as well no for sure and also the other thing that I've, i feel like i need to say that's also very important because of who you are as a person that's that's got value and it's got a status obviously there's a lot of people that want a piece of the cake yes um and you don't always realize if those people are in, the, in your life for the right reason. Yes. And, um, you know, they have also like lost the plot quite a bit because I'm a pleaser, people pleaser, and I want, I want everybody to always be happy. And that's my vision is to, to, you know, to create opportunities for people, but never, you know, the, at I've, the I've, expense of your happiness. The, yeah. yeah. Yes. If you want to be truly <clears throat> happy, so, so not saying don't you. trust people too easily, yeah. Um, but you have to trust people to make a success. Yes. So um, that's the cliche. Yeah. And I think there's levels of trust. The more, the more, like you know, I trust you. I feel comfortable around yeah. you. We can have a conversation. But for me and you to do a business transaction, we'll have to spend more time. I'll have to. You, you'll have to fact check me on on some stuff, some non-negotiables and stuff yeah, that I've done in sure. the past. How's my reputation? You know, trust isn't. It depends on which level. If it's hanging out, having a coffee together, just having a chat. Yeah. You know, our trust level is at a 10. But doing a 2 million rand business transaction, different story. our trust level at the moment is perhaps not where it should be. We need to spend more yeah. time to discuss it. Yeah. Valuable, yeah. valuable piece of information that For you sure, just yeah. uh, Rewind four minutes and listen to that again. It's yeah. truly valuable. And I think if you, if you give your trust and you go for it and it doesn't work out it's okay but you've done the prep work before you went into a business that. transaction or a relationship yeah, and that's where time comes in that's where time comes in and you lose you lose that time and you can't get it back but that also buys you experience later on yeah, for sure. so that you can make those decisions, like, right decisions oh, yeah. two years ago i had a similar thing you know what thank you for the opportunity i've got some other stuff going yeah, on here for sure yeah. awesome what's and the you can only and you can only let learn that through experience so. absolutely absolutely so <coughs> so how do i make right decisions this is one of the instagram um, images that i've seen it, it like i laughed so hard yeah. how do you make right decisions experience it's like how do you get experience yeah. by making wrong decisions that's yeah. how you make yeah, right sure. decisions so yeah. what's the best advice anybody in the industry has ever given you that you carry with you um <coughs> I think the best advice from probably a lot of people is, you know, just be consistent, you know, and don't give up. Like, it, I, I know it sounds cliche, but, you know, not not just in business, but, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to go into, into building a brand and building um, a business and relationships and... You know, you you just got to navigate it and make sure that you're passionate about what you do. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I don't know, there's so, so many great advice that I've got and, you know, learned through myself as well. But I just feel like if you if you are passionate about anything, you know, you, you'll be able to, to pull it off. You'll be able to pull it off. If, you, yeah. if you're willing to sacrifice, do the work... Yeah. And, and, and persevere because yeah. everything good is uphill. Yeah, and it takes time. It takes a long time it sometimes. Time. Yeah. Like there's, you know, a lot of my businesses is only really doing, it's successful now and it's three, four years later. So. But it's got momentum. It's got momentum. Shoulder against the wheel and then it picks yeah. up. If you could spend a day with anybody, dead or alive, who would that person be? And what's the one question you'd love to ask that person? Anybody? Um, goodness. I want to see if it's in or out your industry. I, <laughs> I thought like, what is Mr. Yaku's answer going to be here? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily pick a person, I think. Um, I think I would like to spend time with people that 
um, are very successful and hear their stories. I think that's that's what would drive me and motivate me into, you know, adding it or that value to my own business. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the spot there, I don't know. Um, I think if 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 I had to choose somebody, it will probably be Nelson Mandela. I, f- I feel like wow, um, he is got such an incredible story on changing of, of what change was, you know, and especially us going through change now with the COVID thing and you know how passionate he was about his beliefs. Yes, and making a point that this is the message that he wants to translate is just asking him like what made him not carry on with what he did yeah does that make sense he like, perfect sense he had <clears throat> so much control and so much humility yeah. we, we you know myself and vince uh were very fortunate to work with a lady that um um that's a high performance business coach she's connected to I don't know if you've ever read the book Multiply. It's one of the best business books out there. Um, she's deeply in, in rooted in that in that book and the author, and they do lots of cool stuff together. And she uh, was a high performance coach for Nelson Mandela for a couple of years. She worked with him for four or five years, where you know they spoke daily. And she said, you know, humility, everything, everything aside, like high levels of patience. He was just so patient with everybody and. Mm. He could take everybody's story and just make it in a way that that gave feedback that it made sense to them and always touched yeah, that people. Just sounds amazing. Like, touched people and made them better yeah. everywhere he went. That's what we all want, eh? Yeah, absolutely. And he actually got it right. Yeah, yeah like very big role model of mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> That's what we pray for: yeah. patience. <laughs> With enough patience, anything is possible. Yeah. And then. Yeah, touching on what you said, if you could be a fly on the wall in a room, a business room, you know, where discussions are taking place, in which meeting would you like to be and who's in the room speaking? Like who, who fascinates you in business? Um, people that are in line with their vision um, and people that talks talks about what they're passionate about in regards to what they're doing. Like for me, like I've watched a YouTube video the other day about a very successful underwear brand and it's, it's a female underwear brand, but the passion and the way this lady talks on her YouTube video is, is how I feel and I would love to be. And she, she does six sales every minute. Six online. sales per minute. So is it uh, the, the owner of Spandex? No, it's not spandex. Um, what is this female on the way? Doesn't in, matter. But anyway, so, so she does six, six, six sales every minute. Wow. And it's only an online business. <clears throat> and um, like l- watching that YouTube video, which isn't very long, but just how passionate she is about, like I would love to be in a meeting where, where people are, share the same passion when it comes to her vision in building a brand, the marketing the main marketing guy in aligning with the vision of building that brand, um, the content creation people that it's in line with all those people in aligning with the brand, where everybody's just got the same vision and same passion because a videographer's got his passion. He just wants to create amazing videography and uh, the photographer wants to create amazing um, photography, but everybody does it for the same brand. So, I want to be in that meeting. So the synergist, yes. how, how does that synergist bring everyone together? <laughs> And what love languages does he speak to yes. his team? Beautiful yes. answer. That's a that's a very deep answer, and a true businessman answers yeah. that way. Yeah, Thank you. I, I definitely love the answer. You. Are you a big reader? Um, I do, I do read. Um, not as passionate as I should be, <laughs> but um, I'm more vision. Like I'll watch more videos. And what's your favorite book? Um, I've read a few. I think um, Rich Dad Poor Dad was a good book for me. What's the book called? Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh, Rich Dad yeah. Poor Dad. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I've read um, Mastermind, which I'm not finished now, but it's it's about 
how you master your emotions yes. when it comes to people, to businesses, to relationships, to, um, you know, just, it's, it's, it's a brilliant book, um, which I got as a gift from a friend. Um, but like I said, yeah, books, like I, I do read, but I, like I'm, I'm more video than, than actually reading a book. We, we've got a, a company culture where we've got a book of the month. So by company culture, initially it was enforced. So I said, you will read a book a month. The whole yeah. company is like, what? We came here to make money. You want to make us read? Yeah. Like, you want to make more money? Read more books. And then, you know, it started off with a bit of a, a back and forth, back and forward. Uh, but now it's like we, we released two books uh, for this month because half the team sends me a report on the 10th already. It's like, what's next? We enjoyed this book. What's next? So we've got a big culture yeah. of reading. Oh, and good. it's helped us a lot because we learn every time we have a challenge, look for the best book to solve that problem, unleash yeah. on the company, and yeah, we level up. We level up. So, Very good. what was your first car you ever owned? My first car was a City Golf. Always uh, is a City <laughs> Golf. At one <laughs> other state. What color? Mine as well. Mine is also Mine is City navy, Golf. darkish blue. Nice. Um, Some nice stories in that City Golf. There's yeah. always nice stories in the City Golf. Yeah, that was my first car. Um, quite a few in between now, but yeah. <laughs> I actually just bought a new car two weeks ago. Awesome. What did you get? So I got the A5 uh, Sportback. Nice. One, yeah. That's one of the prettiest cars on the road. Yeah. Um, I just wanted speed because I had a Ford Everest just before that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's family comfortable. Family car. And it, is, it, was, it was probably, if I had to choose between all my cars, it was the best car ever driven. That's okay. Ford Everest. But um, my wife was like, are you going through midlife crisis? Why do you want a sports car? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I just got the I always wanted the A5 and I had the opportunity to get it now and awesome yeah. congratulations so congratulations I hope you have lots of fun in thank it thank you I want to ask you a, a personal this is my question and I struggle with this so perhaps you can if if I struggle with it I know there's someone else that struggles yeah, with it sure. if you if you obviously you're jumping through businesses early in the morning you're doing you're helping clients out, then you're jumping onto a Zoom call, then you're running a clothing brand. Do you have a practice that centers you before you transition into each and every business? I don't know if, if, that, if you've ever been asked that. Um, no, but I do know my responsibilities every day. Okay. And there's time set out for each and every business that I've got. Um, and my my duty is just to make sure that all those boxes are ticked before I go to bed. Um, and there's a lot of things that's going on at the moment with making sure it's all successful and working, but also like I've got an incredible team that, that helps me. Um, but to answer your question, it's just mine, like I probably can have a better scenario on how I do it, but um, I just know this is my responsibilities for the day and I need to make sure that each one gets each done. Each one gets done. Yeah. Doesn't matter what time of the day it is, it needs to be done. Awesome. So you've got a to-do list and come hello high water, that to-do yeah. list gets done before you go to bed. 100%. Yeah. Awesome. And you've got a physical list physical that list, you yeah. go and tick. That's great yeah. advice. Awesome. All a lot in there as well. Yeah. Um, you know, to use my show, for example, a lot of people always ask me, like, why don't you get more people to help you when it comes to my show and it's, it's a good question and, I, and they, there comes a time and you would know that you have to give away the work yeah. for somebody else to do yeah. because you can't do everything you can't even though you want to but you are just going to train yourself and it's not healthy if you don't have a healthy mind you can't have a healthy business and um, I struggle with that with my show because I've got a vision on what I want and it's so hard for me to give that vision to somebody else. And I just don't feel like my show is there yet where I can give the responsibilities away because I know that my show is going to be, a, it's already a huge success, but at the level that I envision it. Um, because I've been there with the other show where I had the biggest show in the world as an amateur show and I want the same for my show. And until I get there with my show, then I'll start. Yeah, yeah. So something 
a mentor of mine taught me a couple of years ago is if you look at control and the size of business that's where it is mm. the moment that that you do this then the, mm. the size of business grows and i've been there i've been there but it's, it's crazy not, yeah like it's especially it's, for uh, a controlling uh, mm. entrepreneur you want to make sure that everybody gets the best experience yeah it's very hard to do yeah it's hard no but i also know that it has to be done it has so. to be done absolutely otherwise you bottleneck all decision making I know a lot about that. You bottleneck everything, and then you've got a team of people waiting for you, you know, to give the go ahead or give the clear, and it just slows everything down. Mm. That kept us, <clears throat> you know, we we were under 100 staff members for for 14 years. That, you know, the business was 14 years old, and we were at about 85. 88 staff members. We're a 17 year old business with 240 staff members. You know, the moment that the moment that I decided, look, I, I, I can't micromanage everything and grow to the size that I want to, I want to go, yourself, yeah. I want to go and employ 2000 people. So let, let's open the gates. And then the business grew. Whoops, we went from 100 cars a month to selling 450 plus cars a month. And I've yeah. got very little control but the people that I've entrusted in my team obviously drive it well. Mm. And that's, yeah, it's scary though. It still no. keeps me up at night. <laughs> I'm sure it does, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's also part of the progress, eh? Part of the progress. Like you said, if you, if you one day consciously decide, I want to do this, but X plus Y equals Z, these are the changes that I have to mm. make. Otherwise, you won't achieve your goal. Yeah. Now, if you, I mean, you've got millions of fans out there if they want to get into contact with you yeah. if they want to you know buy some of your clothing if they want a, a personal training session or you know go on your social media platform and and get coached online how do what's the best way how do we reach out how do we get more via Kudubarai? i think um i'm quite responsive to to my messages on all social media platforms so you're more than welcome to... You, you respond know, yourself? I respond myself. On every yeah. message? On every message. If, wow. it, like, if it's a message that will value, of add course. value to uh, my uh, life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not those messages. <laughs> I understand, but, yes. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I do read all of the messages. Um, <laughs> but you can always, like on my Instagram, uh, my Instagram, my TikTok, my... Um, it's all Yaku, D-B-R-U-Y-N, without the E. Okay. Um, but I'm sure if you search Jacques Brain, you'll find me. Um, and then my website, jdbfitness.coach, if you want any fitness related or coaching or transformation or what, weight loss, weight gain, whatever you want, you can also Reach DM out. me or, or just fill a, small, a short application form on my website and then my team will reach out to you. Amazing. We are also going to put some links uh, below the video to send okay. traffic your way. You. and. Uh, so you've been a true, Thank true you. gentleman and a, and a high-level professional. It was an Thank honor you. to sit down with you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate it.